So this case is uh, kind of more a uh, management dilemma as well, on the, uh, but just on slightly different lines. So this was a 79-year-old female uh, with uh, the usual metabolic risk factors, diabetes, hypertension, hyperlipidemia, ex-smoker, had multiple prior history of bilateral DVTs, PEs, had an IVC filter, and was transferred from an outside hospital with a uh, non-STEMI. She had had a fall at home, uh, so she was, uh, so when she was admitted to the outside facility a week back, she had had a fall at home, but without any prodromal, uh, you know, pre episode, loss of consciousness. Uh, we didn't have much details about that episode, but it seemed like it was just a, she said it was just a fall. She did not lose consciousness or have chest pain or any other related symptoms. The only other relevant uh, review of systems was that she had um, blocked RE stools for about two weeks prior to that admission. So she arrived there in their ER hypotensive, um, and hemoglobin was uh, was really low, uh, 4.6, and super therapeutic INR. This is she she's on chronic Coumadin for her uh, history of DVTPEs. Uh, off note, she was also noted to have uh, elevated troponins uh, during that admission that uh, peaked to 10. Her EKG had uh, infralateral T wave inversions and delayed R wave progression in the anterior <coughs> leads. Um, they did a transthoracic echo there that showed severely repressed LVEF, and it had some regional wall motion abnormalities in the inferior wall as well as uh, infralateral and apical segments. Uh, this is her EKG, just like we spoke about. Um, and there she was um, resuscitated, given six uh, units of packed red blood cells, four FFPs, and vitamin K. And uh, subsequently, her course was also complicated by she became uh, uh, she had developed hypoxic respiratory failure, required brief intubation. But when she arrived to us, she was uh, she was quite stable. She was extubated and uh, she was breathing on room air. So after their initial stabilization, they treated her as um, non-STEMI. So they treated her with the usual cocktail of aspirin, Plavix, heparin, uh, and was transferred to our hospital for a left heart cath. So um, this is a diagnostic angiogram. Um, I'm going to run it, let it play for a second. Um, this is the RAO caudal. Um, yeah, and then this is the. Yeah. So it's uh, So uh, we think it's probably a dissection of, uh, yes, her uh, LAD just just and beyond that the second diag. Right to was transferred while well, still having a little chest pain, but more importantly, the troponins keep going up. So it means uh, not that troponin has peaked up. There's a little dysfunction and increasing continuously. Mm -hmm. It's all the way down the, the whole yeah. area. Yeah, yeah, right? yeah. yes. It's really mm -hmm. far down, right? Right. Yep. right. Something so else. Yes. So so and then the next the picture, so yes. yeah, so you yeah. know her LV is, the right has, is preserved, but the yeah. inferior base, yes. That's so it. this is the, yeah, that's her right picture. So there also you can see there's a dissection yeah, extending. The uh, I have a, uh, no, wild. so actually um, she's only 57. She she is yes yeah young I mean youngish. No, she's probably so yeah. so, uh, so this was actually the only diagnostic picture that uh, that. Uh, I was the fellow, so I took and I, you know, we um, called Dr. Sharma after this. So the question is what to do now with this case with the, the spontaneous dissection and evolving mm -hmm. non STEMI with LV dysfunction. Yeah, and, and black target store stools, yeah. a hemoglobin of four. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So the GI, in, any source of bleeding so, found? So she had a GI workup there. They did not find any, any active bleeding the, there. The problem here, I think, is where do you stop and stop the stenting? It looks to me like the whole artery, the left anterior descending, there's a flap there. She had an upper and lower GI scope there. Oh, there always this uh, small intestine that you yeah. can never see. Yeah. So that's a very big, big drop of mm -hmm. yeah. Huge. Yeah. <coughs> she, was she was seen by GI here she as well, and they, yeah, they said. No, no, no LV, no liver dysfunction. Liver. Her LFTs are oh, normal. You know, these spontaneous dissections are hard. I mean, generally, you try to leave them alone. But, right. you know, but in this, this case, if she's tough. continuing to have rising mm -hmm. troponins, you have to do something. And it's very challenging because you have to make sure you get into, I mean, the few cases that we've done where we've actually taken them to PCI, we try to use IVUS just to make sure you're intraluminal because mm -hmm. oftentimes the false limb is bigger than the true limb <laughs> in these cases. Mm -hmm. um, challenging. 
so um, so at this point, like you guys, looks you like know, you stented yeah. it. So yeah, sorry. Um, let me show you the previous picture. Yeah. So we basically uh, decided to um, go ahead and uh, go for. Uh, well, how did you decide, uh, Dr. Sharma? Did so you use based no, on ongoing ischemia. Uh, that we try to go with the hydrophilic wire. Yeah. We can get to whisper the wire. Human. Right. We published one time with the OCT uh, uh, with these with, you know cases, mm -hmm. uh, the case report and so. Uh, but uh, mm -hmm. doing imaging also is very tricky. Yeah. Very yeah. tricky. Mm -hmm. in the, fox, so the whole time. Yeah. The OCT and in that that no, no, no. Yeah. Forget yeah. the OCT. Forget OCT. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Forget yeah. that. Yeah. I'm I'm sure we have done a couple of cases also. But, 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 yeah. but you're happy when you get into a lot of side branches yeah. along the way. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. 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 Right. You see th as soon as you see that, yeah. you know you're in the distal right. Yeah. 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 The question is the same. If you see the right also, it's like all the way up to the crux. Is the circ also involved? The circ had. Suck was okay. Yeah, okay. yeah, it had some uh, early disease. Yeah, yeah, it's early. early. Look at it's it. Up is there. Different, yeah. But overall, circ was obstruction wise, no. Mm -hmm. Wow. Yeah. yeah, and then um, so basically, based on her ongoing symptoms of you know off and on chest pain and rising troponins and LV dysfunction, we decided to stand for that distally. There's a flap. Little distal because that was at the bifurcation, so mm -hmm. that uh, the Just flap could two stand both sides, and we left uh, uh, we left yeah. that uh, the area. Road. We left the yeah. area uh, without the stand. Uh, mm -hmm. Yeah. So uh, yeah, this is the uh, final sure. angiogram of the right. So essentially, uh, we uh, li like we said, we stented both the right and the left. So the patient was on chronic Coumadin therapy. We started her on Coumadin and Plavix. We because of her extreme uh, risk of bleeding that she had demonstrated, we left the aspirin. And um, unfortunately, her creatine, which was kind of borderline even in the outside oh hospital, boy. had been off and on. So kept rising. So the day three, her creatinine was all the way up to two five, and she was started on aggressive hydration. So, um, so after this, uh, should I say it now or at the end of my presentation? Well, yeah. but no, before you say, say yeah. what, uh, Dr. Sharma, the AKI was how much dye did she get? She didn't get that much dye. She didn't get very much. I think like maybe one thirty or one forty. She. It oh, was okay, yeah, that's it was a lot. Very. Of I mean, <laughs> it's a complex intervention. Yeah, yeah. complex so intervention. Mm -hmm. so, yes. so what was your plan? Uh, after you had some, still had some flap distally but in the right. What were you? Fine. You were, your idea was, was rehabilitate, uh, get better, and uh, discharge. A on Plavix and uh, yeah. aspirin. That's no, it. No, Just Plavix and uh, yeah, Plavix Coumadin. Coumadin. Plavix and Coumadin, 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 no aspirin. No aspirin. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Extra. So that's uh, that's extra. what we left. And patient stayed extra few days because I was recovering from the heart failure and the creatinine bumped up. Mm -hmm. So oh clearly, yeah. we'll never send the patient home. Then you do uh, hydration with the, mm -hmm. uh, with the yeah. uh, increasing creatinine. Yeah. Right. So day yeah. three, she started. Hospital team seven thousand, Guggen right. High Pavilion nine West. Nine West. Hospital team seven thousand, Guggen High Pavilion nine yeah. West. So day three, she started becoming hypoxic, short of breath. And required first to be on BiPAP. She was given like several slugs of IV Lasix. She closed the LED, yeah. No, we uh, yeah. So that yeah. So basically, she had essentially she, she decompensated, had a PA arrest. She right. was resuscitated for about 35 minutes. Uh, eventually, we gave up on the code and uh, uh, basically she expired. Oh. So basically, the last event occurred. Oh. No ST elevation. Yeah. She's just going a little short of breath, and became PEA. What? No ST elevation. So then question was, the, that became the day the six, five or six of the MI, mm -hmm. uh, and uh, the running our diagnosis was patient's ventricular rupture, myocardial yeah. rupture. Yeah. But no ST elevation, no arrhythmia, because she was on the monitored bed. Mm -hmm. wow. That yeah. kind of a PDA arrest yeah. has to be yeah. like yeah. a rupture or something yeah. like that. The, right? the Family Not refused autopsy. So yeah, did you do? Yeah. I don't understand. Family, family refused autopsy. Yeah. I know. I mean, she could have a PEA, yes, yeah, but yeah. no. But we continue. We started on low and oxygen. Yeah, she was on bridge. Was so she was, so we continue she was to bridge. recovered. Yeah, you were uh, bridging everything. Yeah, yeah. 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 Well, terrible outcome. So yeah. the the whole question for us was, and mm -hmm. we presented in our mm -hmm. uh, meeting also, mm -hmm. that should we have left that patient with those in dissections alone? So that's the whole case. Yeah, I mean, the traditional teaching is to leave them alone, yeah. right? I mean, that's just, it, it's sort of, but it's really hard to do that when you're in the lab and you see the STs and patients still having chest pain, and you know you can tack up at least part of the dissection, but um, this is just, I think this, this patient probably would have had the outcome either way. Honestly. But I don't think the stenting is the cause of the rupture. It's, the, it's her myocardial infarction, the original one. Uh, so I don't know that, 
your 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 PCI had any. It becomes, it becomes a procedure. That's. The I issue. know, but I'm just yeah. saying. Yeah. I mean, I think in retrospect, I don't think you have to question that. But um, when it's this bad, the classification on the classification side, where there's flap and there's reduction of flow, mm -hmm. you have to do something. I, I don't think you could have left it alone, even though you're told. Yeah. Try not to do anything mm -hmm. with these mm -hmm. spontaneous coronary dissections right. when there's no, f yeah. you know. I think. Yeah, I think. I think she was type one. I think one you were tied in yeah. the corner. Right, right. She had type. She was type one based on this classification because she had. Yes. You well, know, radiolucent lumens, and right. you know, the, the type two is more diffuse and it's smooth narrowing. Right. So it's actually, uh, it's basically you uh, uh, diagnose it by intravascular imaging, and type three also you have to do imaging because it's kind of confused with atherosclerosis. It's not an angiographic diagnosis, but more importantly. Uh, Based because on they have hematoma. Hmm? Yeah. Mural right. Hematoma yeah, intramural. So, so it's just that's right. Exactly. It's just diffuse. Yeah. So based on uh, this algorithm, we we treated her because of her high risk features, so to say. Yeah. So she had and ongoing she had ischemia. She had decreased LV function. Yeah. Um, and you know we basically chose a PCI strategy, uh, which is which is what they recommend if, if, if they're feasible for PCI okay, with those high risk features. Was she in shock when she presented? No. Not no. not here. Heart failure. Little heart failure. Yeah. When she presented to the initial hospital, she was she in shock, but failure. she was anemic and she was, you know, was hypovolemic shock. Yeah. Incredible case. Okay. All right. Well, thank wow. you. Thank you.